Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Evolving Technology Track. Um, and now we'll have um, now we'll have Daiki Wino speaking about the understanding QUIC by examples. Um, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the chat. We're going to address them in the Q and A at the end of the talk. Um, Daiki, uh, the stage is all yours. Okay. Thanks for the introduction. So let's get started. So quick. As many of you already know about it, or are actually using it, so Quick has been a hot topic in the networking area for the last couple of years. It's now uh, published as RFC. Um, Quick is a transport protocol, primarily designed for HTTP3. It is based on UDP. It is a connection-oriented protocol like TCP. Quick connections can be multiplexed into multiple streams, and the uh, packets are protected by encryption using TLS. OK, but uh, it is a complex protocol, and uh, I've had several misunderstandings. So someone said HTTP3 is quick and vice versa. It's not true. Um, another person said it's a full of layer violation. I think it's not really. Um, some also thought TLS handshake happens for each stream, but uh, it only happens by connection. Another person said TLS libraries should implement quick, like just as they implement DTLS. But in my opinion, it's not feasible. So I'll try to explain why in the later slides. So the goal of this talk, uh, basically first, is to explain important aspects of Quick by going through the source code of a simple application program. And secondly, I would like to clear up the previously mentioned confusions, hopefully. Um, so application. So we use a simple echo server and client application as an example. Um, I mentioned file synchronization application in the talk description, but uh, it turned out to be too complex for this short talk. So I switched to a simpler application. Sorry about that. Um, the echo application actually quite simple. The client needs the data from the standard input and sends it to the server and uh, the server sends the received data back to the client. That's it. So prerequisite. So we use we use C because it would me it would make it easy to compare the quick API with the POSIX networking API. So as a TLS library, we use GNU TLS uh, because it provides a minimal support for Quick, and uh, packages are already available in major Linux distributions. NGTCP2 is the most important part here. It is a Quick stack. Um, unfortunately, it has not officially released yet, so we embed it as a Git submodule. The Maison build system allows us to easily embed uh, such it some module as a sub-project. So, and finally, we use GDIF and uh, some specific Linux functions for other facilities. OK, <clears throat> NGTCP2. So it is a very flexible quick library. It's flexible because uh, the library itself does not do any uh, system I.O. itself, uh, like networking and timer management. And also, it does not depend on any specific TLS library. You can use it with any TLS library if you can provide the necessary callbacks. So for the setup, so the code is available on my Git repository. So there are several files. Uh, Maison build is a build file, uh, client.c and sub.c 
are the main part of the application. Connection.c and stream.c are minimal abstraction of quick connections and streams. And Unity's glue and utils uh, basically just provide generic helper, helper functions. And uh, in the subproject directory, we embed NCTCC2. So let's break down the program behavior. So both client and server take four steps. Uh, first, it resolves the host address and create a socket. Secondly, it does handshake to establish a connection. And thirdly, it opens a stream. And finally, it starts sending and uh, receiving data on the stream. So preparation. So this can be. Uh, I think this is a familiar code, I think. It just resolves host address with get address info and create a socket. It's a common pattern taken from the manual page. So let's move on to the handshake phase. Uh, the figure on the left-hand side is a three-way handshake in TCP. The figure on the right-hand side is a typical quick handshake. So as for the number of round trips, they are mostly the same. Uh, the server still needs to send handshake down message. But the client can start sending the data earlier in the, its uh, second flight. So quick handshake actually just wraps TLS handshake messages in three packet types. The important point here is that uh, packets with different types are encrypted in different encryption levels uh, with different keys. So, yeah. so let's take a look at uh, the server side code. Uh, since Quick uses TC, uh, UDP, so it's a bit tricky to accept connection. So in TCP, we can simply use listen to create a listening socket and use accept to create a socket for incoming connection. But in quick, there is no distinction between listening and connected, connecting, connected sockets. So we need to inspect the received packets to identify its connection. So to identify connections, Quick uses an identifier called connection ID. Connection IDs are typically a random byte string, and uh, that means they do not necessarily correspond to the actual network address. So using connection ID, it is even possible to migrate the existing connection to a different network. Um, conceptually, each endpoint uses two connection IDs, source connection ID, and destination connection ID. They are negotiated during handshake in these four steps. So first the client randomly generates SCID and DCID and send, send them to the server. And the server also generates its own SCID. And in the end, both client and server will have the same pair of SCID and DCID. So in the code, uh, accepting connection looks like this. Um, first, we receive a packet from the client using the receive message. Then pass it to the NZTCP2 decode function to extract SCID and DCID. Then we check if the DCID matches any of the existing connection. And uh, if not found, we create a new connection logically with NZTCP to accept action. So stream opening. So, so after a connection is established, we can open streams. Quick streams are implicitly opened upon writing. So that means there is no dedicated packets or frames sent out to just open a stream. 
So this code opens a bidirectional stream, but uh, it's only logically. So now we can send some data on the stream. So this right to stream function encodes the data along with the pending output from the NZTCP2 library. So it writes out the output into buff and uh, it, uh, it can be sent as a UDP payload directly with the send message. So, so far we haven't looked at how quick packets are organized. Um, quick packets are embedded in UDP packets and, uh, and a single UDP packet may contain multiple quick packets. And further, each quick packet may contain multiple quick frames. Uh, frames are smaller data transfer unit. They can be a string data or ax or and so on. So, um, since UDP is unreliable, so frames may be lost. Uh, so quick use is uh, acknowledgement for loss detection and recovery. Um, most of the frames trigger the receiver to generate ACKs. Um, in quick, they are called ACK A sighting frames. Um, so that's uh, ACKs are per packet, not per frames. And a single frame can include multiple acknowledgement as a range. So, okay, uh, that's basically it about the high level overview. But uh, to make the application work, we need to add some boilerplate code. Um, the first is to implement the application's main loop. Uh, we use EPOL system call for both client and server. So we monitor the socket with EPOL's uh, edge trigger interface for scalability. I think this is also a familiar code. Um, buffering. So for loss detection and recovery, the application needs to keep the sent data until they are actually packed. So in the, in the example application, so buffering is implemented at the application level, pass three, using a GDB queue. So when stream data arrives, the server does not directly write it back to the socket, but instead it pushes it, pushes it in the application's buffer, and then the buffer, buffer data will be dispatched in the repo group. So timers. Um, so in addition to ax, quick also uses timers for loss detection. Um, since NCCTP2 does not have access to the system clock, so timer management is the application's responsibility. So in the example, we use Linux timer FD with a monotonic clock. Um, to check the next expiry time, we, we need to call NZTTP to get expiry function and uh, set the timer. And uh, when the timer fires, we tell NZTTP2 with the handle expiry function. Yeah. So let me show some demo. So hopefully it works. So I will use three different scenarios. First, I will send a single frame in a single stream per packet. Secondly, I will send multiple, multiple frames in a single packet using a parsing option. Finally, I will send frames through multiple streams uh, with a streams option. So the traffic can be captured using the Disha command. Okay, so here T sharp is already running, so capturing on the uh, loopback device. 
And uh, let's start the server. So it started. Let's start the client as well. So, so something has been exchanged. Uh, you see, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, so handshake down is here. So handshake is completed, right? So now I can send some data. So AAA is sent on the string number zero and uh, I get the uh, same string from the string number zero. And uh, looking at the packet actually sent. Um, okay. So you see 616161, 61, 61, so that means AAA in ASCII. So, but uh, this is a short header packet. It contains ACK and stream data. So it's basically a single packet. Let's pack the multiple packets in the single packet. Multiple frames in a single packet. So this is not sent yet. It's just a buffer. So, so now three strings are sent as a single packet, I think. So now and this packet actually includes three string frames, right? So A, A, B, 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 something like that. So now we send uh, strings, uh, uh, multiple strings. Okay. So as you see, um, they are coming from different strings, zero, four, eight. So the difference is just a, a stream ID in the stream frame. So there is no dedicated action to open the stream. Okay. Let's see it. So hopefully we have time to discuss advanced topics, but let me briefly touch, uh, touch them. So first is uh, flow control and congestion control. So those are different concepts and shouldn't be confused. Um, flow control is a mechanism to prevent receiver being overwhelmed. Uh, on the other hand, congestion control is a mechanism to prevent network being congested. So the quick flow control works by advertising the limits. The limits are negotiated during the handshake, but uh, can be changed later as well. Um, we have six limits in the initial parameters and three frame times to control uh, the limits later. Condition control uh, quick uses multiple uh, algorithms for condition control. Um, the first is uh, ECM explicit congestion negotiations. Uh, that is a uh, means for um, the intermediate networking nodes, such as switches or nodes, switches or routers, to notify the endpoints that congestion is happening. So when the congestion is detected, like a switch is uh, becoming overloaded, it marks ECN flag in the IP flag, IP header and forwards the packet to the receiver. Then the receiver mirrors the fact in the upper layer protocol packet in the next packet being sent to the server, sent to the sender. And then the sender takes appropriate action to avoid the congestion. OK. So uh, writing on the reading ECN flag, 
in the IP header can be done with uh, socket options and control messages. To tell NTTP2 about the presence of ACN flag, we can set the ACN uh, field in NTTP2 packet info structure. So, congestion control algorithms. So, they are a bit uh, difficult, so I don't go, I, I don't go into the details, but uh, these algorithms are basically define packet sending strategies when a congestion is detected. So Linux provides uh, multiple algorithms for TCP. Um, the default is cubic, and uh, NGT TCP2 also supports uh, Reno, cubic, and BBR. You can also create custom implementation through the callback. So, so UDT GSO generic segmentation flow is a kind of mechanism to, uh, to send multiple uh, UDT packets uh, with, with a single send message system call. So the size of each UDT packet can be get through the socket option uh, or control message. It's kind of uh, significantly affect the performance. So, OK. So we are near the end of the presentation. And I think the major takeaways are that quick is magical, but uh, not magic. So basically, the magical logic is in NZTCP2, thankfully. Um, quick design is largely influenced by TCP. So writing a quick based application is a great way to learn or refresh your TCP IP knowledge. So that's the end of presentation. So thank you for your attention. Um, the slides are available on my GitHub page, where you can also find the code. Also, I would like to thank Tatsuhiro Tsuchikawa for creating NCTCP2 and uh, reviewing the slides. So any questions? Yeah, so far I cannot see any questions, but if anybody has questions, please do ask them. We'll give it 10 more seconds. Yeah, there are also some useful resources. Um, NZTCP2 has a online document, and uh, there are four RFC. Uh, main part is 9,000. It covers all the aspects. Also, 9,002 post detection is also interesting. Yeah, so there is an ongoing draft to define the applicability of this protocol. Okay. Um, but I guess since we don't have any questions, um, thank you so much, Daki, for your presentation and talk.